like finding domains of radicals, rationals, you know, all those guidelines. But we're going to extend those ideas to functions with multiple variables. So I have an extra one here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so multivariable functions. So first of all, let's. I don't think I have another one. So that was the last one I had. So I'll give you. I'll give you one during the break. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're, let's go over the notation first. So multivariable functions. So. And actually, you, you, you have been working with functions of multivariables before, but maybe you, they, they didn't tell you, oh, this is a function of multiple variables. But number one, the functions that you have worked on before are like f of x equals to some value of y, all right? And where f of x or the y is just some expression, some logarithmic polynomial, you name it. Then, so what are we going to do to extend this? For example, whenever we have a function of two independent variables, which by the way, in the, in the single variable, x is the independent variable. and y is the dependent variable. And because the value of y depends on what you plug in for x, and x, well, it's free, well, of course, within its domain. If you have some crazy rational function, uh, you don't want to, to use those values of x that make the denominator zero, and negative values for radical functions of even index, etc. So let's see, the notation for a function of two independent variables, it's going to be not just f of x. This time, we're going to call it f of x, y, and that equals to z, All right? So the input this time will be another pair, not just one single number like back in the um, in the functions of single variable, it's actually going to be an order pair and the output will be the z. Of course, we can, oh, three, that's uh, f of x, y, z equals, we're going to use w for this, right? And that's going to be three variable functions. And of course, uh, some very simple exercises evaluate the function. I mean, all we do, just like we did with functions of a single variable, plug in the value of x, whatever you see the letter x. But over here, what are we going to do? Plug in the value of x, whatever you see the letter x, and plug in the value of y, whatever you see the letter y. And of course, same idea extends for three variables, four variables, 17 variables, you know. So let's go ahead and do this calculation. So negative one, whatever we see the x, that's a negative one squared times y, which happens to be a two, and minus five y, which is two, plus x, which is negative one. And simplifying this, this should give us negative nine. For letter B, W equals f of x, y, and z in this case, they're giving us e to the x minus 2z over y. And well, they're asking us to evaluate f of 0, negative 1, 2. All right, so this will be e to the 0, which is x, uh, minus 2z, which happens to be 2, and divided by y, which is negative 1. So e to the 0, which is 1 minus 2 times 2, which is 4, over negative 1, that's the same as 1 plus 4, which equals to 5, all right? So, it's just plugging numbers, simplifying, but this time we have more than one variable, we don't plug in a value, we plug in an order pair or an order triple, and the outputs in this case are our values. So, we're going to forget about vectors for for a while at least. All right. 
And of course, I mean the same definitions back in precalculus and or, or in intermediate algebra where we want to define whether we have a function or not a function. So, and there were a couple of ways, you know, like a map and what else? Um, looking at an equation, if we are able to solve for y explicitly, well, that's a function, or like the vertical line test, and the vertical line test can also be extended in surfaces in three dimensions, and the idea is the same. If the vertical line crosses more, crosses more, than, more than once on the surface, in the same way that when we had like a circle, vertical line fails, it's not a function, same over here, this ellipsoid and this elliptic paraboloid. So in, in this case, well, notice how the vertical line crosses two points on the ellipse. For this reason, it's not a function. And well, in this case, the vertical line crosses only once on the elliptic paraboloid here, so function or not a function? Function. All right. Same concept, same idea, just take it to the surface. That's all it is. Okay, so let's see what's next now finding the domain and the range of a given function give a complete description of the domain including a sketch in the x y plane so we can get an idea of what is this um uh, what what's the surface that we're looking at all right so let's see uh, so we have f of x, y equals the square root of x squared plus y squared minus 16. So, number one, so this function is defined, this is a radical function of an even index. For even indices, recall that we cannot evaluate negative values, otherwise we get uh, imaginary numbers, you know, and those are not, we're looking actually for real numbers. So to find out what's the set, all we do is set the expression inside of the radical greater than or equal to zero and solve for, well, you'll see what we solve for in this case. So 4x plus oh, squared plus y squared minus 16 greater than or equal to zero and this is 4x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to 16 and well, looking at this if this were an equation, uh, well, this is an, this is actually a, one of the conic sections. Which one is it? Any ideas? Mm, circle. It's an ellipse, right? Because the coefficients are different. Divide both sides by 16. That's um, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16 greater than or equal to 1. Well, so let's make the graph of the, let's draw the graph of the ellipse first, because they're asking us to give a representation in the x, y plane. We have the variables x and y. So, for the 2D graph, mm -hmm. so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, Four, one, two, three, four. So it's two units in the x direction and four units in the y direction. So that's the ellipse. However, well, this function f of x, y no longer represents a curve, which is the ellipse. This represents a surface in this case, and that surface should be graphed this way. All the points outside 
And that's something that's going to take us back to precalculus. You might remember solving uh, nonlinear inequalities and systems of nonlinear inequalities, and you were asked to shade either inside or outside of the ellipse. Remember those? So, well, that's why we're using those. So when, so when we get to this topic in multivariable calculus to define this set of which actually are the domains of this kind of functions. All right, so let's see. Uh, so let's describe. So the description will be, it's the set of points on or outside the ellipse the ellipse um, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16 equals to 1. So that's the description of this set, of this function. Uh, and of course the way to describe this as a domain well, we're not going to use interval notation in this case because we're dealing with more than one variable. In some situations, it's possible to do. However, the way we write this domain is using set builder notation. But you might remember back in uh, single variable functions, we did something like x such that x is greater than or equal to 3, for example. All right? In this case, it's not just going to be x, it's going to be all the order pairs x, y, such that lie within this, uh, this, this equation, this inequality rather. All right. Okay, let me see. 